You know, it's not that I want to say so much so much about healthcare reform as is I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about it. And that's a bit of a unique, you know, new concept these days, listening to what you have to say about it. <laughs> you know, one of the great blessings I always say of public life is the public. And perhaps the greatest blessing of serving on the three-member public service commission is that we are the most transparent agency in state government. Two of us don't meet in the men's room without a lawyer. <laughs> Or an AP reporter. Clean, clean up your jokes. Yeah. <laughs> they were an AP reporter. But you know what? As clumsy as it is to be as transparent as we are, it results in much greater conclusions. Do you know that I suppose I've attended well over, well, I know I've attended well over 100 public meetings and, uh, and hearings. And nearly every time we hold a hearing in a community that is impacted by an investment, most of the people in the audience are upset. That's why we have the hearings in the communities that are affected. And the conclusion is a better outcome. The fact that we have a Congress that passes bills in the dark of night because Nancy Pelosi says we ought to is greatly offensive to me, as, both as a citizen as a, and as a public official especially one that loves to hear from citizens. And so, while these events are important for policymakers, what's really important is that you say what's on your mind. As Leslie pointed out, our current congressman voted for Obamacare. He said he was opposed to it, but he voted for it to keep it alive for the sake of the process. That's how they start to talk when they've been on the other side of the, the Potomac for so long. See, in North Dakota, when we have a bad idea, we kill it. We don't pass it along for the good of the process. Especially when it's as bad as this bill is. It's a hodgepodge of taxes and mandates and increased costs for independent businesses, for small business people who are the heartbeat of the American economy. An economy, by the way, that needs a little help. Our government spends too much time trying to fix problems when it would have been government restraint in the first place that would have avoided them. So when it comes to this health care debate, ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe it's too late. I believe you can make a difference. I believe that rigorous debate, that loud, angry, but civil citizens can still stop this train wreck from occurring. And while Nancy Pelosi was able to browbeat our congressman one time, embarrass him in a public meeting, into voting her way, perhaps you can browbeat harder back and bring him back in line. Because God knows we can't let this happen. Because it will be a lot harder to undo if it passes. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about, besides the fact that I'm very, very prone and uh, affectionate about public meetings and hearing from citizens as opposed to having tele telehall meetings where you screen the calls and then beat up the questioners afterwards if they ask the wrong question. I have a daughter that's graduating from college this spring, and she's opening a child care, a home child care with her degree in elementary education and early childhood learning. She's opening this child care center in my home. The government has plenty to say about the standards of a child care center. She has great skills and gifts and a lot of love to give children. But she's scared of what this government wants to do to small business. So I'm a little passionate about it, if you can't tell. And one last thing I want to say before, and, and you know, think about North Dakota. It's so great is that we have common sense solutions to problems. We have high quality health care at low cost. We take care of our children. We, as churches and nonprofits and as even insurance companies, we make sure that everybody has quality health care, don't we? We don't need the government to tell us to do the right thing in North Dakota. And I think we could take that to Washington, but I'll tell you this much. Another difference between the United States House of, Rep of Representatives and the North Dakota Public Service Commission is this. We don't vote on anything we don't read. 
the very idea that a bill could be brought at three in the morning to the Rules Committee, and that Congress could then pass the rules, the very rules that make sure that you only get so much time to speak on the bill, you know that whole thing, and that before voting for bad legislation, they vote against motions to require the reading of the bill. It's got to be changed. We need fundamental change in Washington, D.C. This is the most egregious example of the change that is required in that town and in our country there is. We can still stop it. We ought to stand up and do everything we can to stop it. And if Earl Pomeroy votes right this next time, it's because of you. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. Yeah.